Oh, you see that? Aha! Oh, hey. Aha! Science. Hey there, I'm excited for this episode. Today, I am going to be making some iron gall ink, the same type of ink that Mark Hoffman used in his famous forgeries. And then we're going to artificially age it so the ink looks older using similar methods that Mark Hoffman did. So don't be making forgeries, but this ink is actually really cool. And it's actually very important in history. This is an ink that been, people have been using since the medieval ages. I mean, many famous historical documents were made with this type of ink. Like, I mean, like the Magna Carta, for example. And the ink is, can be made very easily with simple household ingredients and a nice walk in the woods. So we're going to go on a nice little walk in the woods. We're going to... We're going to go on a nice little walk in the woods. We're going to gather the ingredients. We're going to come back, make the ink, and artifi artificially age it. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the science along the way. But I will go into more in-depth video about the actual science of how these chemistry and the forgeries are made. I plan to do that in a future video. And if you are curious, and if this topic interests you about forgeries and history, I made an earlier video about another famous Mormon forgery that occurred during the time of Joseph Smith and the science that they used to figure out that that was a forgery. So check that out if you're interested. And uh, so let me give you a quick rundown of what we're going to do. We're going to go get the tannin rich ore products in nature. The tannins are what's going to help us make the ink. We're going to put those tannins in water, add some iron and some acid to make our ink. So let's do this. I was tempted to do make a Julia Child's impression. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Anyway, come join me in my ink kitchen today. Sorry, I put you through that. <laughs> but anyway, let's go. So here we are in the woods. Now, I don't see any oak trees, but I do see some hackberries that do have some gall. So let's see what we can get. So here we have an example of a gall. You can see it forming right here on the base of this leaf. It's this big old circular ball feature. And basically what happens with these is wasps come and they lay their eggs in it. And as a self-defense mechanism, the tree makes this hard, this woody, hard ball around it. Kind of like a scar But it's in order to protect itself. So here we have some of those galls that I picked. You can see they're just these little round concretions formed by the tree. So here's my sophisticated setup for breaking in these galls. And note, I have my eyeglasses for safety protection, yeah. My sophisticated setup, I have a grocery bag, I have my galls, and I have a hammer. And I'm going to break them up. And here you can even see kind of what's on the inside. Curious. And what we're doing by breaking it up was we're increasing the surface area so that more of the gall gets incorporated into our ink. So I'm just going to keep smashing these up and all the other ones that I found and then we should have enough. And there we go. That should do it. I could grind it up a little bit more, but I think that's good enough. I did, full disclosure, I did supplement it with just some acorns that I had, that I found, because I didn't feel like there was enough of the iron galls, and so I just want, of the, I didn't think there was enough of the galls, so I just wanted to supplement it with some of these acorns. Because acorns, they also have tannins. And so, by grinding this up, we'll have a nice, good, efficient extraction of those tannins and be able to make our ink. So now we're just going to put our ground up tannin mixture, our, our galls and our acorns, into just a regular old spaghetti jar I had lying around and get them ready for the soap. So once you have your jar of ground up parts, uh, of ground up galls and acorns, you can just add water. What you want to do is you want to fill up the water just so it gets right 
to just barely covers it. You don't need to have them just completely the whole jar full of water just so that the, they're submerged and they'll still stay wet. You just want them to be in contact with water, but the, whole, the entire jar doesn't have to be filled up. Kind of like that. I can add, I'll, I'll add just a little bit more. So there you go, it's filled up with water. And you can see I just filled it right up to the top so that they're all submerged, but the whole jar isn't filled with water just to cover up our galls and acorns. And you can even see here on the bottom there's some water and you can see that's starting to turn murky, dark yellow. And that's those tannins being leached out and that's what's going to make our ink. So I'm just going to leave these here, by, guarded by my fishy. Leave these here overnight. Let them soak. The longer they soak, the more efficient the extraction will be. So you could technically boil them up, but if you can let them soak overnight or for a couple of days even, the ink will be much darker and much richer. With our galls and acorns soaking, it's time to go to bed. <sighs> Let's go make some ink. So here we are after our soaking and you can see that our ink is already looking a lot darker. Good stuff. Thank you for guarding Mr. Fishy. Love you. So once you got your tannin acorn gall solution, you just give it a little shake. Be oh, leaked on me. This lid doesn't seal very well. Then you don't give it a shake. I was giving it a victory shake. Now I got tan and all over my pants. So then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna pour it here into this pot. I don't use this pot for anything else. Um, Cause I, sometimes if you're making different types of inks, some inks might be more or less hazardous. This ink is fine. I mean, it's just acorns and galls, but yeah, you gotta be careful. I just got an old pot at uh, the thrift store. And so there we go. So now it's in our pot. So we can just turn on our heat. And what we're gonna do, we want, to, we want it to simmer. The name of the game is low and slow. So we just want it to get hot, to simmer, to start cooking off the water, but we don't want a raging boil because the boiling process can actually hurt the ink and ruins some of the chemistry of the tannins. So we just want a nice soft simmer in order to boil, to, to reduce the solution essentially, to get rid of this excess water to con concentrate that ink. So that's what we're doing. So now we wait. You know, this is a good time if you wanted to do other things that you could do them, but I am just so excited to make this ink that I'm going to sit here and watch it. So here's a good little simmer. You can see the steam coming off, so the water is being evaporated, it's being reduced, but we're not like at a raging boil or anything, just a nice low simmer. So we'll let this sit until it reduces down. Still waiting. You know, I'm starting to think that maybe I shouldn't have waited. Maybe I should have just done something else. And so while that's simmering, now would be a good time for me to explain what a rust garden is. So, because what we have is we have those galls and acorns, that's going, to that's going to make our tannins to make our ink. But what also helps make the ink get a really nice dark rich color is if you add acidic rust. And so what I did here, I just got some vinegar just straight from the store. And for the past couple of months, Anytime I find like an old rusty nail or rusty screw or something, I just put it here into my solution. Let's see if I can get a picture of that. Put it just right in there, just to get as much iron here into my acidic solution as possible. So we're just basically getting little pieces of iron suspended in acidic vinegar, and this will help produce that nice uh, dark iron color to go along with the tannins. So you can also, you don't need to add the rust, you can just add the acid and it'll work, but when you add the rust it works just a lot better because you're adding that iron into it as well. 
and it is an iron gall ink. So you want, you want your iron. Just like, you know how you have iron in your breakfast cereal? Your ink wants iron too. That's what makes it strong. Urgh. Still waiting. It's finally done. Whoa, here we go. Okay, so we got our reduced ink solution here. And now what we're going to do is I just have this fine strainer and I'm going to pour it in. And of course the strainer will strain off most of the uh, goo, most of the residue. And we'll get our ink here in our jar. So let's do this. This is a good way to see if you need to reduce it more. Like honestly, I could reduce this more. It's looking pretty watery. You can see how it looks a little bit clear. But it should be good enough for our purposes to, as a demonstration of how to make this stuff. So we'll just pour out. <laughs> Getting a little feisty. Ink. <laughs> Come on. This is why I wear my apron. Sometimes you get a little splat. And so there we have it. We have our ink. You can see it's reddish brown. Hopefully when we add our rust garden, it'll turn black. So here we have our ink before we add our iron rust from my rust garden. So here we have the rust garden and it's kind of pretty nasty glory. Give it a little bit of a shake shake, a little bit of a shake shake, a little ring 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 do. And I'm just gonna get a teaspoon or just, you don't need a lot, just just a bit. I just eyeball it. Every ink batch is a little bit different. And you know, that's okay. That's part of the fun. You can get really specific measurements if you want, but that's not how I do it. So I'm just gonna get, so I got my rust guard in. I'm just gonna pour that in. You can see how it changed that color into a mar much darker black. Let's see, let's compare if I can. So this one here, this is before the rust garden and now you can see this black one is after the rust garden. So that iron and that iron and the acidity really helps it get that nice dark ink rich color. So there you go. We got ourselves some ink. Perfect for writing letters. <laughs> Just for fun, I got some of that ink, the tannin solution, before I add the rust garden. I got some rust garden here in my pipette. I want to see if we can actually see the color change. So I'm going to slowly put a little drop in. Oh, you see that? Aha! That is the black ink of night. Perfect for our ink. You can see it's just amazing just how simple this little ink recipe is. And you can see how back in the day this was perfect for anybody, you know, uh, before they had all the technology we have. Uh, pilgrims, pioneers, someone living out alone in the woods, they can make this themselves. All they need is some oak trees some water, and a little bit of iron, a little bit of acid, and you can make a nice ink. And now you can write letters or constitutions. You can write whatever you want. Pretty cool. And the other thing to do to make the ink at a nice kind of thicker consistency is to add some gum arabic. You can get this stuff just like at art stores and things. People use it to make paints and some people use it for food stuffs. It's basically just powder it up in gum and a little goes a long way and since we didn't make very much ink I'm just gonna add a little bit in there and then stir it up and of course it can be a little bit hard to stir putting it on some heat I really should have done this before I added in my rust garden my acid but it's all right it should be just fine so just add your gum arabic just to give it a nice texture for writing 
And so now with our newly made Gall Acorn ink, let's write something with my wonderful number three brush. Love it. So the question is, what should we write? I don't know, how about, hi. There. There. Could have, I probably could have reduced this a little bit more to make it stronger, but you can see, there you go. You got your ink. Pretty exciting. You can write. I'll stay there. And the nice thing with the acid is the acid, by adding the rust guard in, actually helps it stick onto the paper because the acid kind of eats into the paper a little bit, helping it stay on there. So there you go. We got ourselves a message. Hi there. Thank you, nature. I love you. So now what we have to do is we have to artificially age this ink. You see how this ink looks really dark and black. As ink gets older, it's going to look more rust colored. It's going to turn more brownish red. And so in order to make a forgery, you need to make it look older. And so you can wait a long time or you can use some artificial means that like some of these chemicals. So now here I have just this little solution that I made up. Now Mark Hoffman, what he used, he used a mixture of ammonium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide. Ammonium hydroxide is a base and hydrogen peroxide is a strong oxidizer. And so when you mix those two together, you can rapidly over you can rapidly induce oxidation, which causes the reddening. Now I'm going to go a lot more into the chemistry that I, I plan to in a future video, but for now I just want to show you what happens when I add some of this solution. And also just, it can be a little bit dangerous mixing ammonium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide. So I actually am just using a simple, super simple base. I just added, made a little mixture of, I just made a little mixture of baking soda, put that in some water. So it's a base, but it'll still have the same effect. So you can see right here. That is starting to change color where that drop is. But let's put that under the microscope so we can really see the real effect. But seriously though, mixing ammonium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide can be dangerous. So really don't do it unless you have the proper equipment. And so again, for this purpose, I'm just using baking soda and water. So it's not the exact technique that Mark Hoffman used, but it's safer. Still produces a similar effect, at least for demonstration purposes. And again, I plan to get much more into the deep chemistry and talk more about exactly what that's, those chemicals do that Hoffman used in a future video. Microscope time! So here we have that H zoomed in. You can see the ink dried up onto the paper. And this is what it looks like before. You can see it's all black. Uh, you know, the ink looks rough under a microscope, but... It's really hard to find smooth things under a microscope. So this is what it looks like before. And now let's look at the image after I add a base and artificially age part of it. So here you can see on the left side, you can see that reddish brown circle. That's where I added that drop of base. And you can see that it, the iron has oxidized. It's basically made an iron oxide, the same thing as rust. And so it gets that same rusty color. And so what this is, this is an oxidizing reaction that makes the ink older, that makes the ink appear older than it really is. However, there is a side effect. When you do this, it causes cracking. And that's how they're able to catch Hoffman in his forgeries. And also I was able to record this cracking process. So let's look at that now. So here we have our ink under the microscope and I just added a big drop of base. And what happened during the investigation, they found that Mark Hoffman's forgeries cracked unnaturally. And you can see that when we add the base, our ink is going to crack as well. You can see the crack forming on that left side over there. They called this the alligator cracking phenomenon. Here, now that you know where that crack is going to form, let's watch that again. And the reason for the cracking is essentially the pH change causes the gum arabic, the sugars in the gum, to crack and move. 
So there you go. The method of making some cool medieval inks out of nature. You get a good nature walk in there too. And we're also able to look at how Mark Hoffman was able to make those inks, artificially age them for his forgeries, and see some of the telltale signs that the investigators used to catch him ourselves with our own eyes. So pretty cool, fun little experiment. You can do that at home on a nice, on, you can do that at home whenever you'd like. Uh, I do plan on making a video where we go much more in depth about that interesting chemistry, look more at the techniques that Hoffman used, look more at the techniques that the investigators used to catch him. So subscribe if you're interested to see those videos come out. And and of course, if you want to learn more about the interesting story of Mark Hoffman, go ahead and watch that Netflix documentary. And if you want to look at some more interesting science and history about some other forgeries in Mormon history, check out my other video that I made about the Kinderhook plates. So anyway, pleasure being here today. I'll see you later and ciao.